I watched Clueless, and I got to say, I love how old movie feels. Not like the black and white stuff; those are entirely different on their own. I'm talking about those 80s and 90s movies that are just trying to have fun by telling a simple story. Things in them were just cheesy and over the top, but fun. It's gonna be metal. It's going to be mental. Nowadays, most movies are controlled by big studios. Mostly, only franchises or IPs that are a proven property can get made. New and original content cannot be made without ticking all the political check boxes or providing the audience with a larger-than-life revelation or some deep and meaningful life lesson. All of these are cool and all, but it is just not fun. Don't get me wrong. I love to learn new perspective about the world or watching stories that teaches us how to be better. For me, watching how soldiers actually just trying to survive in war is just as entertaining as watching a bunch of superhero kicking CGI monsters' ass. But sometimes, I just want to sit back, have a bowl of popcorn. Turn off my brain and not worry about anything, and just have a fun time. And I am glad to say that Clueless, despite not being some Oscars-worthy movie, is definitely one of my favorites, which I might revisit sometime down the line. So there are two main characters in this movie. First is Shea, the lead. Shea is a 16 years old high schooler who is the most popular student in school. She lives with her father. A litigator who she is very close with, he influenced her to be good at debating, but it's not really debating, more like talking her way out of stuff and socializing on a very superficial level, like agreeing to stuff men said without even understanding them. This behavior is supported by her father. This sometimes makes her look like a dummy in front of others. She seeks partnership based on suitability on the appearance level instead of real connections, and always does things that benefits herself. Josh is Shea's stepbrother, whose mother had divorced Shea's father. Comes to their mansion almost every day during his college break to help out with Shea's father's work and avoid his mother. He is socially conscious young man who embraces. Idealism. She always mocks him for this, while Josh mocks her for her superficial lifestyle and pursuit of vanity. The story begins when she gets bad grades from a teacher who doesn't buy into her excuses. So, in order to trick the teacher into giving her good grades, she orchestrated an excessive plan to let her teacher fall in love with another one of her teachers. I don't know what. The That was. I love it. <laughs> Come on, let's go. She thinks if the teacher can be happy, she will have better moods. Then he will agree to change her grades. The clueless teachers do fall in love and improves her grade in the end. On the other hand, Josh is coming to town and will be spending time at her house during his college break to help out with her dad's work and avoiding his mother and his new stepfather. Shea is obviously not enthusiastic with his presence. So one day, a new girl comes to school. Ty, seeing how Ty. Is clueless about the school plus her success on matchmaking the teachers. She decides to let Ty join her little queen bee society and tries to make Ty into a copy of herself. Even though Ty falls in love with a cracked hat, Travis, she talks her out of it as she herself doesn't want Ty to tarnish her image by dating a cracked hat. All of this is because she herself doesn't want her image to be tarnished by associating with cred hats. Then she gives Ty a makeover and physically turns her into one of them. This is also when Ty gets to meet Josh and she finds him funny. And Josh finds she is secretly a smart girl, just not using her talent on the right things. 
But of course, Josh is super against Shi turning the clueless new girl into one of her puppies. But Shi says she is doing Tai a favor by turning her into one of the most popular people in school. After the makeover, Shi thinks it's finally time and wants to match Tai with a hot guy who recently broke up with his girlfriend, Elton. She lies to Ty about Elton having a thing for her, so the clueless Ty falls for Elton. At a party, after doing everything to separate Travis and Ty, she pushes Ty to Elton and successfully have them hanging out together till the end of the party. She is contemptuous with helping Ty. She feels like she has done a good deed by helping Ty. Shia hangs out at the party for too long, and her father orders her to come home. She again tries to push Tai towards Elton by forcing him to give Tai a ride home, but Elton refuses and insists on taking Shia home. During the ride, Elton makes his intention clear and asks courtship with Shia. He claims that Shia, being with himself, is the right pair. Tai will never be good enough for him, at least based on appearances. He even tries to sexually harass her. Shia resisted and get out of the car. Salty Elton drives away and leaves her there. Without any options, Shia calls Josh for help. On the ride home, Shia points out Josh's girlfriend for misremembering Hamlet, which impresses Josh. Shia never liked boys around her age. She finds them immature and stupid. But it all changes when a new guy, Christian, comes to school. She instantly falls in love with him, as she thinks he is so hard that he will be a good match for herself. The following weeks, she carries an excessive plan, such as sending herself flowers and chocolate every day just to make Christian jealous, so he will make the first move. And he did. He asks her out to a party. She is very happy. She dresses well for the party, which catches Josh's eyes. Josh's impression on Shi slowly changes from impressed to love. Josh finds an excuse to leave work and follows Shi to the party, where he dances with Tai as she is all alone at the party. This little action changes Shi's perspective on Josh and thinks he is actually quite nice. After the party, Josh and Shi buy supper on their way home for Dad and his colleagues. Then they watch TV together, talk a bit about life and bond. After that, she starts to get nervous and busy choosing the best outfit for her date with Christian, as she decides to lose her virginity during the date. On the date, Christian keeps his focus on the videotapes, despite she keeps flirting with him. Once Christian realizes she's motive. He quickly finds an excuse and leaves. After discussing with her friends, she is told that Christian is gay. She is embarrassed, but realizes how much she wants a boyfriend, how much she craves love. She still remains friends with Christian. During one of their shopping session, Ty is teasing some random guys, but it gets out of hand, and Ty blames the guy for endangering him. Showing that she has completely changed into another Shear, clueless Shear, despite knowing it's Ty who causes the accident, still doesn't figure out that she has turned Ty into a monster. But soon she will. The next day at school, everyone is talking about Ty's near-death experience, which changes the story, of course, making her a victim to generate topics about her. Ty is now the most popular. Person in school, successfully replacing Shea. Tai still lets Shea stay in their little queen bee group, but it is now clear to Shea that Tai is the one in control. Tai has fully transformed into Shea. She has no time for real friends, craves attention, no time for anyone other than hard dudes, disregarding her true feelings for the boys he loves. Shea watches Tai make her question her life. Then she has a bicker with Josh. After that, all she thinks about is why she cares about what Josh thinks of her. Without her mind on the driving test, she failed. 
She once again tries to talk her way out of the failure, but this time it doesn't work. Losing her popularity and her get out of jail persuasion ability, she feels invisible and clueless how life changes so much. Back at home, Tai is waiting for her. She tells Tai how bad she feels, but Tai doesn't care, continuing to ask She to help her get Josh. Then they have a little argument, and the conversation ends after Tai insults She. She finally snaps and realizes how much of a monster Tai has become. She keeps wondering why she cares so much about Tai liking Josh. In the end, she realizes that she likes Josh. His newfound realization: she is acting weird and constrained whenever she is around Josh. She is clueless of what she should do. Her usual shenanigan of making Josh jealous will never work, so she changes and improves herself so she can be worthy of Josh. She starts watching news, helping her father with work, learns art, and volunteers for charity. During these changes, she starts seeing the good side of the people around her as well. Josh is happy. She sees her stepsister change into a better person. And starts to fall in love with her. She even makes out with Tai after Tai realizes how much she has changed. She messed up her father's work without realizing it, which pisses off her father's colleague. Josh tries to stand up for her. She is afraid that she ruined her father's work. She loses all her confidence and blames herself. Josh tries to comfort her. They confess their love for each other and kiss. Ty ends up with Travis, the guy she liked when she first came to school, and Sure and Josh stay together and live a happy life. I assume. The story is very outdated looking back now, but it is still effective. It is short, a little too short for my taste, but overall the story is serviceable. And able to fit in a lot of funny jokes and heartwarming segments that are just classic. The characters are memorable as well. All their actions and decisions make sense. It is really a treat to see how she slowly changes from a selfish vanity character into a smart and caring girl. Tai, despite not having much screen time compared to She, has her character fleshed out almost completely. Her journey from being a naive new girl to a carbon copy of Vanity Sheer is fascinating, and in the end, she manages to realize she is going down a wrong path and changes back. Although not seeing how she turns back really hurts the movie, she just magically becomes good again. The tone of the movie is very light-hearted, and it stays consistent throughout the movie. Some of the moments may be a little bit too cheesy, dramatic, and dumb. If you look back now, but I think they are what makes this movie so much fun to watch. It never takes itself too seriously and tries to use this comedy story to let the audience learn a lesson regarding being true to yourself. Alyssa Silverstone absolutely kills it as the lead. She perfectly captured the balance between believable and over the top with her character. Just look at. Her line delivery, her line delivery is just pitch perfect. She makes Sheer looks like a total clueless ditz with her credit cards in the first half, and a girl who is truly clueless of what to do after realizing she needs to change. The movie is a hell of a fun time, and not much to nitpick about. It knows what kind of movie it is, and it doesn't try to be anything else. All the jokes are funny, and there are lessons to be learned if you really dig into it. Is it a chick flick? I mean, kind of, but a good one where characters are growing and the story keeps progressing with the characters. In conclusion, Clueless definitely holds up to this day, and if you haven't seen it, give it a try. I'm very confident. That it will be a fun time that you will never regret. Move along.